Hello and good morning. This is the 21st of December 2018 and obviously the big news in the football industry is the sacking of Jose Mourinho from Manchester United Football Club. Let us have a look at the timeline of Mourinho in United. In the year 2016, he signed for Manchester United and he won the League Cup and the Europa League in his very first season. He signed Paul Pogba for 90 million in the first season and in the second season he spent over 300 million in cumulative to bring new players to the club and extended his contract midway for another year. When the new season kicked off this year the board didn't have back any of his signings as he wanted a new defender and Manchester United stocks hit all time high at 24 dollars 60 pence but resulting in bad performance on the field the stock suffered a 70 34% decrease to reduce at $17.20 pence 4 days ago Man- Mourinho was sacked from Manchester United and he received a compensation of over 20 million dollar 20 million pounds uh, today we have Dr Rob Wilson football finance expert from Sheffield United Sheffield Hallam University who is also my professor to speak about what financial impacts Mourinho sacking will have on Manchester United. Welcome, Rob. Hi, Sasha. Uh, yeah. So, obviously, Manche- Edward Wood, who is the vice chairman of Manchester United, he said that financial performance of the field is not impacted by performance on the field. What is your take on that? <laughs> <laughs> He did. Um, and chief executives or vice chairman or anybody involved in. professional sport organization in particular comes out with something like that it's it gets the hairs on the back of my neck standing up because it couldn't be further from the truth um what we've found at Manchester United in particular is their the last 25 30 years of their financial power and the way they've been able to improve their revenue systems and the commercial deals they've been able to drive have been inextricably linked to their sporting performance and research that we've done at the university that you will have read um demonstrates that without the sporting performance the financial performance is very difficult to to achieve now i've not quite been able to get to grips with which one drives the other just they are inextricably linked so when a vice chairman says something like that i think this he's trying to talk it talk the problems on that sporting side down i think because I have a cursory glance at manchester united's annual reports or the interim financial results when they release them and there are clear statements within there and some of your postgraduate colleagues did some presentations the other day and and they'd honed in on the fact that you know the mission of manchester united is to be one of the world's best performing clubs both on and off the field so they are themselves saying that this sporting performance is really important and you know from a brand value point of view that's really clear so the the better the sporting performance the more attractive the brand of football is notwithstanding some trophies that might or might not appear at the end of the season will help drive commercial deals will help generate new sponsorships and new endorsements and and ultimately for a club like Manchester United when they go and renegotiate those big deals the shirt supplier the shirt sponsor those big ticket commercial deals um if their sporting performance is good it'll be much easier to do that yeah i mean can you briefly explain like glazers for the glazers model at manchester united it is like people say like it is the epitome of the sporting model mm. and they have done really well in terms of financial power but when you look at some of the debts of manchester united i guess it is over 500 million so yeah that's just just, that. just under 500 million at the moment and i always have a wry smile when people talk to me about the the glazers and this you know this shocking model that they've put into uh, into the english premier league Let's look at this as a business, right? Borrowing in itself is not a bad thing. And borrowing is not a bad thing providing that you can ensure two main rules of finance are applied. Can you pay your debts as they fall due? IE, can you repay the loan at the rate that the loan is needed to be repaid and is the selling price higher than the cost? IE, what you're selling as your products or services creates more value than it costs you to deliver them. So, for Manchester United, pre and post the glazer takeover their selling price is higher than the cost they're making good profits and consequent as a consequence of the takeover are they paying their loans back yes they are one of the big criticisms from fans has been that that disables the club in some way so they can't invest in new things new players high wages and so on but as your introduction 
quite eloquently explained, Manchester United have had no problem in signing new players. They've had no problem in paying you know, multi-million pound wage packets. And look back at the last five years, they've spent more money cumulative, cumulatively than any other team in the league. And this year their wage bill is as high as Manchester City. So no one can say that the Glazer model of ownership is bad for Manchester United. Um, as a business model, it's actually very sound. Uh, I had a look at some of the facts about Manchester United the other day, like ever since Alex Ferguson has gone and David Moyes was appointed, there have been multiple managerial changes in the league. Jose Mourinho was appointed by Chelsea, he won the league with Chelsea, got sacked, Conte came in, won the league, FA Cup, got sacked, Zidane had won the Champions League with Real Madrid three times and... It is quite astonishing that David Moyes still has five months left on his actual contract. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? What has gone wrong for Manchester United? I think in many ways they ha- they've, they've been quite petrified of change. And by that I mean Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson's era was so long. He had such control over that football club. He was able to clearly squeeze you know, those extra percentages of playing performance out of the squad of players he had. He... He did extraordinarily well with the group of players he had, but he was there was a dynasty there with him, and I think Manchester United have struggled with the transition. And you know, I think the David Moyes appointment philosophically was probably the right one to make. He was a proven manager at Everton. He was able to um, to, to to invest quite shrewdly in the transfer market. He was stable. They were expecting him to to, to last quite some time. I just think it was too big a jump for him. I think the, the magnitude of Manchester United and the the brand and the personality and the and that pressure cooker that is the football club was was simply too much. And there are no other clubs in English football that have that pressure cooker environment. You know, a, a team has a bad game at the weekend, and it doesn't matter. Manchester United has a bad game. It's over every single back page of the newspapers. Um, you know, Chelsea could lose 1-0 to Cardiff City at the weekend. It, uh, they've had a bad game. Manchester United lose 1-0 to Cardiff City. They've had a shocker. It's really bad. Something's got to change. So I don't think Manchester United necessarily moved with the times. And other teams were able to do that. Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, to a lesser extent Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur certainly. And what that has done is polarised the problem at Manchester United. And for me, that's a structural one. They need a director of football or a sporting director, someone to look after the philosophy of the club and, and take it back to this kind of multi-dimensional approach to playing. It's not about attacking football. It's about a pragmatic approach to football and a, a group of 11 players that are able to attack very, very quickly but also contain the opposition. And I don't think they've done that with, with any of the managers. Ironically, I think Mourinho would have been a better appointment when Ferguson retired. Um, and then they would be now in a new system where you know, a new younger manager potentially, a, you know, a Zidane or a Pochettino would be in there and, and being able to do something that is more up to date, let's say. Uh, can you like, explain a bit about the director of football role? Because Ed Woodward and the Manchester United Football Club, they gave out a statement like, we'll f- perform a thorough review of our football system and we'll yeah. appoint a director of football. What is the actual role of director of football in a football club? Well, Dr. Dan Parnell at Manchester Met has done some really cool research into this, just looking at the, the functionality of the, the sporting director or the director of football. You know, Barcelona have had one for, for years and years and years. And, the, and essentially what that post is designed to do is to look after the kind of philosophy and the fabric, the DNA of, of what they want, what the board wants a club to be known for. And that goes right the way down into your academy system. So when... Uh, a, Clubs are going out and scouting eight, nine, ten-year-old uh, kids. They will be looking at particular characteristics. Southampton is a famous model. They want to play four-three-three. So when they play, when they're in their academy at eight, nine, ten, they're playing four-three-three. The intention is you then graduate those kids through to the first team. They then generate either a return on investment because you sell them, or they actually make the grade um, in the first team. But it goes beyond that academy system. It then talks. It, it goes into recruitment of coaches to make sure the coaches are looking after those particular facets that you want to exhibit, that any managerial appointment fits into that structure um, and that all of the business around the football club is linked to that kind of brand of football that you want to be known for. And Manchester United is that kind of exciting, attacking, swashbuckling style of play that we saw under Ferguson so often. 
Um, so without that structure in place, what Manchester United have battled with is a managerial appointment that needs to stabilise the club and take them forward, yet there's been no discernible strategy. You had three very different managers come in with different styles of play. So each manager recruits players to their style of play, gets sacked, and then the next manager has to then try and undo that. And that's why I think you've seen Manchester United flatline in, you know, for the most part over the last few years. Notwithstanding, of course, the fact that you know, Van Gaal won the FA Cup, Mourinho won the uh, Europa League, the FA Cup, and of course were beaten finalists this year, and unfortunately for them. Um, so they, and they just haven't got it quite right. Uh, like Manchester United's stock value saw a 34% decrease in yeah. the last four months and recently Mourinho got a payout of $20 million which is nice for Christmas and New Year obviously <laughs> but what do you think is the immediate or the fine, you can say future financial forecast of Manchester United mm. because obviously they will get things right but what is what will these things have impact on their financial prowess well, they might not get things right you know they could go down the route of of liverpool and just become a you know almost like a non-event a non-entity for 10 15 20 years you know liverpool achieved so much in the 70s and early 80s but then nothing uh, in the 90s and 2000s save for um that famous night in istanbul when they won the champions league um i think looking at share prices are always difficult um the reality of a share price is you only ever realise your profit or loss when you sell. Um, so if you're a Manchester United stockholder right now, you're not selling, you're holding. Um, they've been as high as $27 a share whilst Ferguson had retired. So you know, there have been times where the stock value has soared, and that's normally on the back of commercial news. Um, we saw the share price bounce on Tuesday. It increased by, um, I think it was about 3% up on opening. Um, as the market realised the news that Mourinho had been relieved of duty. Um, the share price will tick over if Manchester United return to a, a more attractive style of play under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the end of this year, um, perhaps have some sort of moderate playing success, then I think that will, that will stimulate the share price a bit. If they're able to win some trophies or to, to get back to a, a position of competitiveness, you know, and by competitiveness I mean back into that top four, I think you'll see the share price rise again. The reality is Manchester United is a huge global brand and their partners mean that um, they'll exceed £600 million turnover this year, which is great for any um, shareholder and that's good news. Um, but they can't continue this decline in sporting performance because it will become much more difficult to sell seats. You know, Old Trafford has never had, in my, my time, never been so many empty seats and certainly never so many tickets on general sale um, and it's those sorts of markers that the club will be looking at to try and turn around I mean once Mourinho was sacked within five minutes it was Paul Pogba who posted a cheeky caption mm-hmm. and a post on Instagram uh, which obviously is good for publicity but I guess it creates some sort of negative impact on the commercial partners it's an interesting way of looking at it you know they've Adidas have come out, haven't they, with him and said it was a, a poorly timed tweet, a uh, poorly timed Instagram post that it was part of a wider marketing campaign. You can't escape the issues that Pogba has had at the football club, and you know maybe I'm old fashioned, but you know as a professional, that's a professional footballer, a professional academic, a student that is trying to be professional in the way they conduct themselves. I have no time for it. I just consider it to be very unprofessional in terms of behaviour. Might be great for the Paul Pogba brand. But I don't think the, the brand association for Adidas will be particularly good. I think it could be quite damaging. And Manchester United simply won't tolerate it. You know, hear it quite often in the press, don't we? And, and talks about that no one player or a manager is bigger than the brand that is Manchester United. And, and getting your ducks in a row in that way is, I think, quite important. And Paul Bogba's got you know, a big two or three months at Manchester United because there are very, very few players that leave that football club and never go on to better things. Do you think, Ole who is the new interim manager of Manchester United until the end of the season, will be the right man to take the club forward after the end of the season? That's a good question. I think a lot of that will be, will be determined by his, um, his playing success. How he re- They've talked a lot, haven't they, over the last couple of days about reuniting the dressing room. I watched his, um, his first interview with MUTV yesterday, and I must say he's the first manager that's generally come in and, and seem to exhibit 
what Manchester United is about. And there's a piece in his interview that, that really got me, which was and the interviewer asked him something like, you know, you haven't had a lot of time to scout the opposition. You know, how does your performance analysis help you create your match plan at the weekend? And he said, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said, I'm not going to worry about the opposition. This is Manchester United. Manchester United is going to play how Manchester United needs to play. The players are going to express themselves. We are going to control what we do. And we'll think about the opposition later. I haven't heard that since Ferguson was in charge. And it's the style of football has always been a bit containment. It's how do we nullify the opposition and then nick a goal. That's not how Manchester United were ever built. They were, this is us. We're comfortable in our skin and what we're doing. Um, we're going to take the game to them and we'll see what happens. And... Um, that really impressed me yesterday. It's the first time I've heard a manager come in properly and say, you know, we are Manchester United. You know, this whole adage of hated, adored, never ignored. Um, and he seemed really comfortable with that. And is he the right person over the next few months? Who knows? Who else was really available? Who can be a custodian for this time of change? I think the club have made a hugely important but bold move. They will restructure. I think this the technical director will come in. That will then shape the next move for the football club. How he interfaces with that, I think, is really important. Um, and I think the fans and the board will trust him to do that for the for the next few months. And yeah, who knows? He returns the FA Cup, gets to the latter stages of the Champions League, gives Paris Saint Germain a good hide in. Then you know, <laughs> who knows? Football's a funny old thing, isn't it? Uh, I mean, one of the things which, what I was looking at is like Manchester United gave Mourinho a new contract in the middle of last season but when the new season started he wanted certain signings mm. which the board didn't back so why do you give your manager a new contract when you don't want to back his, back his signings well, part of giving managers or players new contracts is to protect your investment um, I think it's important that there is a level of stability and Ed Woodward has been really clear you know, even when you think back to David Moyes' appointment that stability is how he wants to build Manchester United and I can't fault him with that the research that we've done on managerial change that you've been involved in um, more recently would suggest that a stable manager will return on average more points per match than a managerial position that keeps changing. Um, you might get those short-term boosts in performance, but longer term, you're better off sticking with, you, uh, with the manager. Uh, there are always going to be exceptions. Um, I don't think they supported him in the summer how he wanted them to because they knew they know they need a structural change and you know Marino get, got a lot of bad press over his his signings you know if you, you think typically a Mourinho signing is an experienced professional is probably you know late 20s going to be fairly high value um, high value in terms of transfer fee high value in terms of wages proven he doesn't the, the, the narrative is that he doesn't like youth but you actually look at his signings and the over his entire career history. And I think when we worked it out in the summer, his average age profile is about 23.4, which actually is better than a lot of other teams in the top six. So I think he gets a bad rap for that. Um, but I do think the lack of support in the summer was more down to the nature of the targets he was after. And they've invested really heavily. And at some point you've got to say, you know what, we need to perhaps develop a younger type of player that we can get a return on because you know, for all the money they're playing Alexis Sanchez there's no return on him um, they might get 15 million but so he will have cost them a huge amount and there's no return on that investment yet um, so the names that were banded around whilst very good players I don't think necessarily fit that Manchester United model of of enhancing their quality and then selling them if, if necessary when they're a bit older. We're all, the Manchester United are almost buying the end of career players and that's not what I think the board wanted. And to be honest, the only thing I have seen Alexis Sanchez do in a Manchester United shirt is playing piano. On his own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was a swab deal with Mkhitaryan and apparently both the players are not performing for their new clubs mm. properly. It's difficult, isn't it? I think... You look at a player in the style of Alexis Sanchez, he doesn't suit the that kind of containment football that Mourinho seemed to be playing. And I'm no football coach specialist. I look at what I can see. You know, I found myself switching Manchester United off because they weren't as attractive as I wanted to see them play. And I think when you've got players with that creativity, with that that flair and that desire to go forward even though Alexis Sanchez would track back and would work very hard for a team, he wants to be going forward. And I don't think the, the system necessarily suited him. Um, of course, he's injured at the moment, so perhaps that's a nice way for him to, 
hit the reset button under the new manager and, and, then, and then go again. Thank you for your time, Rob. My pleasure. It was nice speaking to you. No worries. Anytime. Thank you. Okay.